Welcome to Channel X TV, sponsored by Volo. Delighted to be joined this morning by Stu Hill, um, relatively new, I have to say, CEO of DHL e-commerce. So, welcome, Stu. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Good. So, for those that don't know you, I know you've got a ton of experience. You've been working for a luxury fashion retailer re recently, Matches Fashion UK, but you've also been at, at John Lewis, ASOS, Farfetch. I've got to ask the question, what's going on in the delivery industry? They don't normally hire from retailers. They normally hire from delivery expertise. Yeah, I asked myself the same question, actually, um, a few months ago. Um, so I think for me, it's an interesting one in, I think the carriers and certainly DHL are looking at how they can connect with retailers. Um, and whilst I have worked at the, the retailers you mentioned uh, just there, in between, I actually started my own carrier company, WN Direct, that, that I sold to DPD. Um, and very interestingly, I think what we brought to market at that time, which we're hoping to rec replicate here at DHL, is that retailer in insight and almost talking to a retailer um, like we are retailers. I think that is mm. quite unique in uh, in the market and and while I've been appointed in this position. Mm. So tell me, as a retailer, what did you hate about carriers and what did you love about carriers? Um, it's a great one, I think. So for me, um, certainly over the last 18 months, two years, and this is a personal feeling, um, putting my retailer hat on, it, I think there's a lot of innovation that has dried up. Um, and because of the economy and, and where people are chasing profit at the moment in the retail world, it's become a very transactional relationship. Um, and and that isn't so much what I hated about retail. It's it's uh, where we've ended as a, a as two partners together. So ultimately, I think from a carrier standpoint and certainly for retailers, what we need to do is start to work through how we can help a retailer's gross margin and rather than just being a, a line on the on the cost line. And and ultimately, mm -hmm. the carriage in most retailers is probably the second biggest line, um, certainly logistics, after stock itself. Yeah. Um, and because stock has got a lead time of six months, it generally is that line that the CFO or finance team will go to first for an immediate cost saving. It's where the, the first mm -hmm. line and, uh, can be saved. Yeah, and I think the bidding war between carriers, there, there's so many nowadays from, uh, obviously, DHL, you mentioned DPD, but there's tons of others I could mention, every Yodel, <laughs> Parcel Force, you name it. So what does a, what, what can a, a carrier actually do? How embedded can they get with the retailer? And is it just things like supplying trailers with later cutoff times and still offering next day delivery? Is it helping on the return side? Um, is it different delivery methods like lockers or parcel shops for collections and drop-offs? What do retailers really want that's going to get them away from just looking at the, the bottom line price and, and, and look at service? Yeah, great question. I think, I mean, the things you've mentioned to me are almost hygiene factors um, for a carrier. And it's very hard for carriers to distinguish themselves differently in those elements that, that you've mentioned. Um, so I think there's there's probably three things I would mention. One is understanding the part that that carrier plays. Um, the carriers that you've mentioned have all got different strengths. Um, and therefore, for me, making sure that DHL is focused on on a high quality service um, and not, not being something that I can't be, I think is really, really important. And making sure that retailers understand that. I don't think it's it's wise that anyone goes down the rabbit hole of trying to do everything to everyone. Um, and therefore, focusing on quality for me is is quite high. I think the second one um, is really creating that partnership. And partnership for me is ensuring that there is longevity in the relationship for both. Um, and working with carriers, retailers, to make sure that ultimately both can, can benefit is key. And to do that, I think there's got to be a very open relationship. I think there's got to be dialogue when things go wrong. Thirdly, and I think most importantly, it's how we as carriers can help in a gross margin um, sense. And, and you mentioned returns there. I think 
a great example of that is when something is off sale and certainly in an environment where we've got passes going cross border um us starting to work through how we can help retailers get that stock back on sale as quickly as we possibly can actually starts to help gross margin if you can get that item back on sale with a retailer two days early that's two days of of additional sales that the retailer can get um mm -hmm. and i think it's there where the industry definitely needs more innovation um that intercept and a parcel if a retailer in the uk is selling uk to us generally we wait from us back to uk to get that item back on sale but as a carrier why can't i be offering for example solutions in the us to get the item back on sale much, much sooner um mm. and ultimately i think that ensuring that service quality is high then helps the retailer with their repeat custom and if we can help with repeat custom that's where the gross margin benefit really starts to help help a retailer yeah i've always thought that sort of carriers are in a sort of a bit of an invidious position because i know as a consumer if something arrives late or it's gone to the wrong address i always blame the carrier i never blame the retailer but really it's it's unfair for me to expect the the the, the carrier to take my call i should be going to the retailer and letting them sort it out how do you get across that conundrum of and i have to say dhl really high service i, I can't even remember a time anything's gone wrong with the dhl parcel but how do you sort of support the retailer in that experience and both lessen the workload on you with customers coming directly to you but also support the retailer and putting things right when they go wrong yeah it's a great question it's um it's something that's actually very dear to my heart so i think the first element is actually both retailers and consumers have different views on this um some retailers really want to own that customer experience others understandably are paying us to manage manage the service um and therefore for me this is about nimbleness and flexibility in the solutions and processes we've got to allow that choice for the retailer. Um, and to do that, I think we as, a, as an industry need to invest very heavily in, in data. Um, and ultimately, what we all want, and I think retailer, consumer, carrier, is to ensure when something does go wrong, and, and undoubtedly things do go wrong, we ultimately get to that end consumer before they get to us. And that proactiveness of data management and understanding there's a delay, I think is where we as an industry have got um, good steps to make to empower uh, in choice and, and updates prior to that issue uh, happening. So that I think for me, that proactiveness is, is a word I would use as where the opportunity really is to improve this in the future. And I think we're, 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 we're in a world, especially for international shipments, where regulation is getting ever tougher. Um, let's not mention Brexit too much, but we, we've just had to change a government, and a, a government that are committed to cutting red tape between the UK and Europe. But there's even red tape between the, the, the Great Britain mainland and Northern Ireland, and the, there's more coming down the, 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 the line. Um, what can a courier do to help a retailer with this legislation? It, should it be the retailer that gets all the paperwork in order or can carriers actually assist with that? No, I think carriers can definitely assist in that. Um, and again, I put my retailer hat on. I think it comes back to the data in and the data out. And I think as an industry, what we've got at the moment is inbound data for imports into a UK warehouse that a retailer manages. Um, and generally the, the parcel carrier then does all of the paperwork out of the country. Um, and what's missing is the link up of those two elements of data to help yeah. the retailer manage that RGR process, the refund process on a, on a duty return, for example. Um, and therefore, I think the carrier networks, um, in my mind, the opportunity is for us to work closer to share data with third parties or the retailer to enable that 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 join up um mm. and i think you're right you mentioned brexit i think we are still trying to learn where those data exchanges are but it's us as a carrier that generally sit on all of that information that needs to be shared in a different way to enable that that process to take place and and that is a great example where i think we as 
carriers can help gross margin of, of retailers because if we can help on duty drawback if we can help on duty refunds that really impacts the gross margin of a retailer that that where yeah. the real win and unlock is so i'd love to get an idea of what your view of the future of logistics for retailers is um what the demands are going to be how the hl are adapting um things change so fast in e-commerce on an almost daily basis so uh, what what are you thinking of as a, a ceo that can really help retailers um <clears throat> both on the service side and the profitability side yeah i think uh, i'd boil it down to, to three main areas and mentioned one um quite a bit so i think data is absolutely key data sharing to ensure that there is a real proactive view of what's happening in, in networks and and to do that i think when something goes wrong you've got a consumer um that is being proactively managed and i think as a consumer that's what we want i think the second is um it is almost the industry as a whole retail at, at checkout we've gone for speed and i think that's pivoted in the last 18 months to to convenience and i talk about our competitors being as much that user experience on an uber eats or a deliveroo than it is a carrier um so i think empowering the consumer post purchase to choose delivery options around convenience is absolutely where um, the industry is going and obviously as a carrier we've got a, a large part to playing that um i think the third piece for me is actually you mentioned this merge of a retailer brand with a carrier brand um and i think we as carriers could do a lot more in that post purchase experience where we are showing retailer brands and almost enabling that tracking email to become a marketing email um and yeah. and empowering that there's a, an affiliate marketing feed that i think most retailers have most retailers have fashion retail have a shop the look as an example why not embed some of that sh shop the look cross selling in our tracking emails post purchase that really start to sort of sell more and if if we can help a retailer sell one more parcel than they did um before that again is increasing the gross margin which is where this all all unlocks so and i think that's where bringing retail experience into the carrier world we can start to to cross fertilize that and start to innovate to really help the retailers in a different way so Stu, this has been really interesting uh, but th there's one question i've got to ask which is <clears throat> i always view dhl as a really high quality carrier that i can rely on but perhaps not the, the 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 lowest price give us your pitch for dhl why should retailers want to work with you as a partner yeah it's a great one and i think you've you've hit the nail on the head there we are not in that very low low cost um area for me we are carving out a niche that is extremely high quality high service um i'd like to position ourselves very honestly as the carrier that cares um i deal with end consumers on a on a daily basis and and ultimately we've got the luxury because we are still quite small in in market and market share to be able to do that um dhl as a group have invested um a lot of money in our infrastructure and one of the things i have been today is capacity constrained and therefore mm -hmm. the timing of my appointment coincides with a a nice new hub that's opening um later this year that will give us that capacity so i think for me that that carrier that cares high quality with a dhl brand does mean that we can offer retailers something quite different in market to what's being offered today and if someone was watching this and likes what they're hearing how do they get hold of you and i know you can go to the dhl website but can we put your linkedin address beneath this the, 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 this video how, how, how can people actually get in touch yeah please do um We've got the, the DHL sales teams. We've got lots of LinkedIn pages. Um, but yeah, please do um, DM me or message me and we'll we'll manage that on a on a regular basis to make sure we get back to everyone as soon as we can. Fantastic. Stu, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Chris.